Today's project is going to be making a jig that enables us to safely cut small stock on a miter saw. I often use small pieces of wood when making projects such as kaleidoscopes, bottle stoppers, and various other small projects. In each of these cases I need to square off both ends of the stock. Now here's the problem. When cutting small stock, it places my hands closer to the blade than I feel comfortable with. The next big problem is the rotation of the blade, going this way, will tend to pull and lift the stock up into the blade. Here's an example. If I turn the blade, it lifts the stock that way. If my hand were on that when it happened, it would pull and lift my hand up into the direction of the blade. What makes it even worse, on a fence design like this, a tiny piece of stock can actually slip under the fence, making it easier for the stock to be lifted up into the blade. The obvious and simple solution would be to put a backing board along the fence that would prevent the wood from creeping through the miter saw's fence. The problem is, it still places my hands closer to the blade than I would like them to be. So here's the solution I came up with. A miter saw jig that gives support to the back of the stock as well as allows me to keep my fingers a safe distance away from the blade. And here's how it works. The jig gets placed against the miter saw's fence. The stock gets placed into the jig and locked in place with this little stop lock. With the wood held firmly in place, I could keep my fingers a safe distance away from the stock and make a safe cut. Simply loosen the stock block, flip the piece of wood around, tighten the block back down, and we can complete squaring off the block. We now end up with a block of wood that's been squared off on both ends and done so with minimal waste. The best part is it was done safely. If you're interested in making the jig, I'll take you through the steps. You'll need a minimum of materials to complete this project. All you need is a 6 inch wide piece of pine by 3 quarter inch thick, a T-bolt, and a knob. Whenever building a jig, it's best to mill the lumber flat first. Take one side through a jointer, then take an edge through the jointer, and finally run the board through a planer. The first thing we need to do is make the base of the jig. Exact dimensions aren't important. I made the jig about 10 and a half inches wide. So I measure out on our board draw a line and then make the cut. Now our backing board is going to be the exact same length, so I can just take the stock I just cut, lay it across, line it up, and draw a line. Once again, I line up my stock, then make the cut. At this point we end up with two identical boards about five and a half inches wide by ten and a half inches long. I don't need the backing board of the jig to be as wide as the base. So in this case I'm going to take it down to about three and a half inches. You can make this cut, you can rip it on the table saw, or in this case I'm just going to make the cut with the miter saw. The next step is to measure and mark the position of the T-slots on the base of the jig. Take my tape measure off the edge of the board and I mark about an inch and a quarter. 
I go to the other side of the board and I do the same thing. I measure in an inch and a quarter. I line my square up with the mark. I draw a line down the board. I go to my other mark, line up my square, draw a line, and now it's off to the router table. In order to cut the T-track into the base of the jig, I need a bit that's called a keyhole jig. This particular one's made by the Whiteside Company. I lower the bit down to the proper height. I'd like the T-track to be cut in the center of the width of the board. So as you can see, I've centered the head of the bit with the board. In order to ensure the accuracy and straightness of the cut, I'm going to use both my miter gauge and the fence to help align the cut. The guides I use are called the Jessam Clear Cut Stock Guides. Each guide serves the purpose of two feather boards. The guide holds the stock down. The wheel of the guide is an angle and it draws the stock into the fence, so it eliminates the, the need to have a feather board push the wood into the fence. thing we need to do is to cut the rabbit joint that connects the base of our jig to the fence of it. I have the router table set up with a rabbiting bit. I'm also going to once again use the Jessam clear cut stock guides to guide the wood by holding it down, pulling it into the fence, as well as preventing kickback. And here we have a nice clean rabbit joint. We do a test fit. And everything looks perfect. Now we're ready for glue up. We want to make sure that we get a really great 90 degree angle between the base and the fence of the jig. So here's a little trick I came up with. We can use a known 90 degree angle, which would be our miter saw. In order to protect the miter saw from glue, I just put down some wax paper. I apply a thin layer of glue. I brush it in. Make sure I get both surfaces. Wipe off any excess. And then place it on our jig. I push the jig up against the fence. Make sure both surfaces are flat. And make sure that the fence is against the miter saw fence and I make sure that the base of the jig is pushed back and flush with the base of the miter saw. Now we'll just let it dry. While our jig is drying, we can prepare our stock block. you notice that the stock block is about an inch and a half thick. In order to achieve this, we can take two pieces of scrap wood that we started with and glue the stock together. Our stock block is about two and a half inches square. So start with some stock at least two, three quarters or three inch wide. Take the two pieces, apply some glue, and then brush it in. And then put the stock together. We'll put a few clamps on it to assure a tight fit.
Once our stop block is finished drying, we'll make two ripping passes in order to size it properly. The first one to clean up one edge, and the second one to take it to its final size of about two and a half inches. Now I'll make two cross cuts. The first one to clean up one of the edges and square it off. Now to square off the other end. You'll notice I left the rip fence in place. Take the other side of the stock. I push it against the rip fence in order to maintain the squareness. Now I move the fence away. If I were to leave the fence in place, the stock could bind against the fence and it would cause a serious kickback. Now here's our stop block, properly dimensioned with all four sides smooth. The next thing we have to do is find the center of our stop block so that we can put our T-bolt through. Here I'm using a simple center finder. I anchor it on all four sides, make four lines, and where all four lines intersect will be dead center. We now move over to the drill press in order to drill a hole through the center of the stop block. You notice that I put the fence up against the stop block. I learned from experience that sometimes a bit can grab and the block of wood would start to spin around like this and it could hurt your hands. So having the block of wood against the fence prevents that from spinning. Next we put our T-bolt through the hole and screw on our knob. Now we take our jig, put the T-bolt through the slot we cut, and tighten down the knob. Here we have our completed jig. And here we have our jig ready to cut. We put our stock in, Overhang the jig by a slight amount, depending how much we want to take off the stock. Tighten the stop lock. We move our stock under the blade till we see where we want to make our cut. Then we make our final cut. Here we have a perfectly squared piece of stock with minimum waste and our fingers never got near the blade. If you're wondering why I had you cut two tracks, here's why. You can remove the stop lock, put it in the other side, because there's going to be times when you're going to have to make cuts from the other side of the blade. And now you're able to do so. I hope you find this jig as helpful as I have. Stay safe and thanks for watching.